Hello, my name is Tamsin, and today I'm going to read you a bit from my most recent book, which is this one here, Winston and the Wondrous Wuba Gymnastics Club. So the setup for this book is basically that Macy's dad, Jim, is marrying Winston's mum, Carol. And this means that Macy and Jim are moving to Winston's tiny little town of Wuba. And Macy's very unhappy to be moving to Wuba because Macy's biggest dream in all the world is to be an Olympic gymnast. Um, but Wuba is such a tiny town that it doesn't have a gymnasium, so she won't be able to practice her gymnastics. So before this chapter, I'm going to read out to you. Uh, Macy and Winston have just finished their first day back at term at the Wuba school. And during the day, they have decided to create their own gymnastics club with a few friends from school. That night, Winston stared at Macy as she ate her spaghetti bolognese with gusto. She'd been miserable at every meal since moving in, so this was a marked improvement. Maybe, Winston hoped, she was finally ready to give Wuba a chance. Good first day at school, Bob, Jim said. It was okay, Macy said. I didn't listen much. Macy! But the teacher was nice, and so were Winston's friends, except Oscar. Macy had ignored Oscar for the rest of the day. When Winston asked her why, she said Oscar was rude. She was obviously still offended about his refusal to join the gymnastics club and his claim that gymnastics was girly. Winston was confident Oscar would join eventually. He didn't like being left out of things. But when he joined, Winston hoped Milo did too, because otherwise the gymnastics club would only have five people. And Winston preferred even numbers. How about you, Winston? Did anything good happen at school today? Jim said. Winston tipped his head back to look at the ceiling as he thought through his day. Great-grandpa's light fitting was glowing above him, the metal kookaburras around the base with their wings spread as if they were about to fly away. Um, Frau Katz let me join in with senior maths. Carol clapped her hands. That's great, honey. What's senior maths? Jim said, reaching for the mashed potato and tomato sauce. Winston thought it was strange to eat mashed potato and tomato sauce with pasta, but Macy said it was a family tradition, so Winston was happy to go with her. It's the maths usually done by year six kids, Carol said, looking at Winston proudly. Wow, Jim said. He leaned over to ruffle Winston's hair. You must be really smart. Good job, buddy. Winston was used to his mum saying how smart he was, so it had lost most of its novelty. It felt good that someone else thought he was too. Want to hear about a good thing that happened to me today? Macy said, waving her fork. Of course, Carol said. Macy turned away from Carol to address Jim, and Carol's forehead wrinkled. I found somewhere to do gym training. Jim grimaced. Maybe it'd be good for you to have a break, bub. Gymnastics isn't the most important thing in the world. Yes, it is, Macy said. It's not. I thought we agreed that you would get involved in some non-gymnastics activities in Wuba. We didn't agree, Macy said. You told me I should, and I said nothing. But you also said that you want me to be happy, and the only thing that will make me happy is gymnastics. Jim sighed. That's not true. There are many other things that will make you happy. Spending time with your new brother, for example. Jim gestured at Winston, and Winston looked down at his plate. But I suppose if you train somewhere else, at least you'll save the clothesline. It's gone wonky from all of your swinging. Where will you train, sweetheart? Carol said. Macy kept her eyes on Jim as she responded. At the school playground, Brooklyn is lending us her mini trampoline and Macy finally turned to Carol. Can we borrow the old mattress in the garage? We need a soft place to land for vault. Where are your manners, bub? Say please, Carol, Jim said. Macy rolled her eyes. Please, Carol. Carol looked confused for a second and then said, of course you can. Great, then we'll be able to train on all four apparatus. Who's we? Jim said squirting tomato sauce onto his mashed potato. Are other kids joining in? Yep, Macy said, snatching the sauce bottle from Jim, including Winston. There was a clatter as Carol's fork fell onto her plate. Winston sighed. You think I can't do it, don't you? No, Carol said, patting his shoulder. Of course you can. You've just never been very interested in sport. Maybe not before, but I'm interested in gymnastics. Macy chimed in. Brooklyn's doing gym with us too, and London. This is splendid, Carol said, 
greeting unnaturally wildly. Winston didn't think he'd ever heard his mum say splendid before. You're doing this on the school play equipment, Jim said. Macy nodded. When? In the afternoon, after school. Jim ran a hand over his shaved head. We'll have to ask the principal, but you can't use the equipment outside of school hours without permission. I reckon I could, Macy said, crossing her arms. I reckon you shouldn't, Jim said, not without asking first. Winston was biting his fingernails as he walked into Frau Katz's office the following morning, Jim on one side and Macy on the other. While Winston's nerves made him quiet, Macy's made her talkative. As she chatted loudly about the bushes of wattle surrounding the playground, which Winston agreed were very pretty and golden, Jim gave her a light tap on the back of her head. Simmer down, bub, he said. Frau Katz was at her desk, a cat sitting on either side of her computer, one with dark fur, the other orange. She looked at Jim, Winston and Macy over the top of her glasses, which were placed near the tip of her nose. Glue Scott, she said, gesturing in front of her. Please, have a seat. There were only two chairs, but they had wide seats, so Jim took one and Winston and Macy squished into the other. Frau Katz pushed a plate of gingerbread biscuits towards them. Winston took one to give him something to do with his hands. Frau Katz smiled at Jim. What brings you here? Jim wiped sweat from his brow and Winston stifled a giggle. Why was Jim nervous? We've come to ask, Jim said, pausing to clear his throat, whether the kids can use the play equipment after school. Jim tapped Macy's shoulder. You explain, bub. Macy flicked her two braids back and forth. I've loved gymnastics since I was six, and when I found out that I have to live in Woober for a while, Winston's ears pricked up. A while, he thought. Did she think she would only live in Woober for a while? Macy continued. I was sad because since there's no gym to practice in here, I thought I'd get weak and inflexible and my future gymnastics career would be ruined. But then I worked out we can train on the school play equipment. Gymnastics is an excellent sport, Frau Cat said, stretching her arms out on either side so that she could stroke both cats at the same time. It teaches flexibility, strength, dedication. Macy looked at Winston, her eyes wide and hopeful. He gave her an uncertain smile in return. But, Frau Katz continued, and Winston's smile sank. Gymnastics can also be dangerous. If you want to train after school, an adult must supervise. Jim nodded and said, I agree. It's not dangerous, Macy said. Winston nudged her and said, shh. Frau Katz merely smiled and turned to Jim. Could you supervise? Jim shook his head. I work, uh, I finished work at 5.30. It would be dinner time by the time I got there. How about Carol? She gets home when I do. Oh well, Frau Katz threw up her arms. You'll have to do your gymnastics training during lunchtime. Safety first. Winston could feel Macy shaking with anger beside him, so as Jim said a polite goodbye to Frau Katz, he dragged her from the office. She wrenched her arm from his grip as soon as they were outside and the office door was closed. That was stupid, Macy said. It'll be okay, Winston said. We can train at lunchtime. Macy crossed her arms. No, it won't be okay. Training at lunchtime will be a disaster. For once, Macy wasn't just being dramatic. At lunchtime, the new Woober Gymnastics Club marched to the play equipment, their heads held high. First, they sat on the fake grass next to the equipment and Macy led them in a number of stretches. Winston was a long way off being able to touch his toes, but London wasn't far behind Macy. Macy nodded at London and said, you have natural flexibility. London grinned widely and waved her arms in the air. Everyone giggled except Brooklyn, who was concentrating so hard on her stretches that her face was red and screwed up in pain. They attracted a crowd of spectators. When Macy directed the club to do the windmill stretch, which involved whirling your straightened arms around in circles, The watching kids laughed loudly and imitated them, whirling their arms too with silly expressions on their faces. The club was doing a stretch involving bending and straightening their legs when London leaned over to Winston. Want to quit? This is embarrassing. Winston shook his head. It was embarrassing, but he wasn't a quitter. Plus, he needed to show Macy that she could do gymnastics in Woober, just like in Dubbo. Macy eventually declared stretching to be over and the club moved to the play equipment. She decided that they should begin their training on bars. We'll start by practicing swinging, Macy said, with our legs in a tucked position. It's easy. 
As Macy demonstrated the correct way to swing on the lower of the two bars, Winston saw Oscar's and Milo's heads pop up behind the group of giggling kids. Who wants to try? Macy said. The twins' hands shot up. Macy told them to play scissors, paper, rock, and because Brooklyn chose scissors and London chose rock, London got to go first. She began her swing with enthusiasm, but after touching the bar with the tips of her fingers, she lost her grip and tumbled to the ground. She landed on her back, her legs and arms flailing in the air like a cockroach, and even Winston laughed, but behind his hand so that London and Macy wouldn't see. Macy's calm exterior was beginning to crack, her frown deepening with every chuckle from the spectators. Once they'd all had a turn at swinging, Winston only just saved himself from falling too, Macy demonstrated the pullover, using her arms to pull herself up and around the bar so that she was on top of it and it was resting against her hips. Unfortunately for Winston, he told Macy how excited he was to learn it, so she made him go first. As he gripped the bar, he regretted he had agreed, particularly in front of so many kids. I don't think I'm strong enough, he whispered. It's okay, Macy said, I'll spot you. Winston's blank expression must have shown he didn't understand, because she said, that means I'll help you lift yourself up and around the bar. Winston looked Macy up and down, his eyes narrowed. She was tiny, he weighed much more than her. But she seemed so confident that he shrugged and flung his legs up, trying to get his hips on and around the bar. He could feel Macy's arm on his back, but she couldn't hold him up and they fell to the ground together. There was silence among the watching kids. But then, when Winston and Macy had untangled from each other and sat up, there was an eruption of laughter, even louder than when London fell. Winston's head was swirly and he wasn't sure which way was up, but out of the corner of his eye he could see Brooklyn and London running towards him. Macy leaped to her feet. Her voice was wobbly when she spoke over the giggling crowd. Gymnastics, she said, is not funny. Then she turned on her heel and walked through the school gate, her bouncing braids punctuating every step. Thank you.